So even though it seems like most people have already discounted Joe Biden, and I'll admit it seems like he's not going to win, let me remind you all that we should never underestimate our opponents. And I say that because he's still the frontrunner. If you look at real clear politics polling averages, he still is in the lead. And what you kind of see is there's a type of zigzagging effect that's happening. He's going up, he's going down. So a lot of people will look at Joe Biden's polling numbers and they'll say, okay, he's going down again. Good, we can kind of count him out. Although he's remaining relatively stable overall if you kind of zoom back and look at the overall big picture. Whereas Elizabeth Warren is currently on a downward trajectory and Bernie Sanders is rising but starting to kind of stabilize at around 17 to 18 percent on average. So Joe Biden is still a threat and I'm not going to make a prediction. Um, I don't think he is best positioned to win, but should we count him out? Absolutely not. And if he were to win, I don't have to convince you guys. You already know that he would be a disaster. Why? Well, we have another example why he would be a disaster. So he signed the no fossil fuel money pledge, violated that. Uh, the day after he attended CNN's climate change town hall, he went to a private fundraiser with a fossil fuel executive. And now guess what he's doing? Um, he is taking unlimited sums of dark money through a super PAC that he created after his third quarter of fundraising was dismal. So the situation with Joe Biden is just, it's lose, lose, lose. If he's the nominee, I think Donald Trump gets another four years in spite of what polls say now, because Hillary Clinton was also polling about the same as Joe Biden is at this point in time in the 2016 election. In 2015, she was still doing great, but you know, as time went on and as she spoke more, People got sick of her, and I think that people are starting to see that Joe Biden also isn't the real deal. So I want to play a clip that was released by the Sunrise Movement, which I think is an organization, one of the organizations that's just doing the most to hold politicians accountable when it comes to climate change. So they asked him, why should we trust you if you are now taking super PAC money? Why should we believe that you're taking the issue of climate change seriously if we're not going to be able to trace the dark money you're taking? His response here um, is just, I don't even know how to explain it. Just watch. is just off the charts. Look at my record, child. He called that person who asked him a very legitimate question a child. Wow. And on top of that, she cited his record when he said that because he's boasted about his record before, um, but she cited it. Iraq War, and she went on. I don't know uh, what else she said, but then he said, no, that's just not true. Like, Joe Biden is slowly but surely transforming into Donald Trump. He comes up with these bold, grand Trumpian lies. He denies reality. I mean, we should just all collectively see, as those participating in the Democratic Party primary, what a disaster Joe Biden would be. But nonetheless, he sits at the top of the race. He's still in first place. Now, one thing that... Uh, you know, came to mind when I watched this is he needs to answer the question, right? Like, we can't rely on activists to, you know, bring a camera to these events and uh, ambush them. We actually need a media who's going to do its job and hold these politicians' feet to the fire. Next time Joe Biden is on CNN, they need to ask him, how can we trust that you're going to fight for any of the policies you say you're going to fight for? If you're doing all of these private fundraisers, if you're now having a super PAC out in the open, I mean, these are questions that should be asked and we shouldn't have to rely on organizers to ask these questions at events. We should have a media that actually does its job and is adversarial and is going to broadcast his answer to these questions, very important questions to an audience of millions, but we don't get that. So people who watch the mainstream media 
they don't necessarily see how bad Joe Biden is. Maybe they see the gaffes here and there. Maybe they see his poor debate performances. Maybe they know about his poor fundraising. But the fact remains that unless the media starts doing its job, then these instances where, you know, active activists ambush politicians, it's just not going to be enough. Like, this video needs to be shared far and wide. And if you're on Twitter, I would advise you to retweet that tweet from the Sunrise Movement. But again, it's not enough. Like, this individual poses a threat, an existential threat to us. Because if he's the nominee, Donald Trump gets another four years, most likely, in spite of what polls say now. Now, you can argue with me and say that the polls are more important than my opinion. Fine. But I would, I would say, you know, give it time. Give it time, because the same thing happened with Hillary Clinton. And this election isn't just about Donald Trump, right? This is about the judiciary. Donald Trump has appointed so many federal judges that now about one in four federal judges are Donald Trump appointees. He has remade the judiciary for years to come. And if he gets a second term, he most likely gets a minimum of one more Supreme Court appointment, which means that that would be a six to three conservative split on the court. So we have to understand that we're fucking playing with fire if we nominate Joe Biden. And look, I don't think he's going to win, but I'm not going to count him out. I'm not going to underestimate my opponent because he's still polling at number one. There are still enough centrists and older people voting in the Democratic Party primary to where he could be propelled to victory in the same way that Hillary Clinton was. So if you are a young person, you need to get out and vote for Bernie Sanders. And not only that, if you truly believe in this movement, we've got to put in the time. We've got to put in the effort. I know we're tired. I know that we're working multiple jobs. I know that we're going to school. But even if we can commit to 10 to 20 phone calls for Bernie each week, um, and even if we can't do that, if we could set up recurring donations for $5 per month, that can make a difference. Like, I don't want us to kick ourselves and look back at this moment, this opportunity that we have now, where we had a second chance to elect Bernie and say we didn't do everything in our power. At least if we lose, we'll go down knowing that we tried. We tried our hardest. So I just ask for you to do that, you know, to really think, am I doing enough to defeat Joe Biden and get Bernie Sanders elected? Um, because it's important. Bernie Sanders truly is our best bet against Donald Trump. And if he's the nominee, even though I think that nobody really is a sure bet, Bernie is our best chance against Donald Trump. And Joe Biden, you know, aside from Buttigieg, I just can't imagine a worse scenario where Donald Trump would cruise to re-election if it were Joe Biden or Pete Buttigieg. We've got to stop him. We've got to defeat him. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.